Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. 12 minutes left. What a time to run out of sugar. This is episode 146, recorded March 3rd, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. Yes, the movie that answers the question, or or uh, what does it do? It reinforces the statement, you can't have enough sugar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I... <laughs> My name is Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, and maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monsters, spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. Yay. With me this week are my incredible co-hosts, Whitney Cagliazzo, an accomplished artist, makeup artist, and writer. How you doing, Whitney? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. I'm watching the sun. No. <laughs> Don't look at the sun, Jeff. Uh, also directly with us is at it. Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of War of the 70s and 80s, a film producer and director with Wreak Havoc Productions and a comic book artist and writer. Chad, how are you? I'm good, but I look directly into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> for, day, for days. It's- for, yeah. That's great. Uh, also with us is Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, and lovable as hell. How are you doing, Daphne? Hi, I'm doing really good. Can I zoom in on my super cool uh, lights? Yes. <laughs> mm, there they awesome. are. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. Around <laughs> holiday lights. I didn't think she can make those lights any better. Oh yeah, it's but they got it. You got yeah, those sugar yes. skeletons or sugar mm-hmm. skulls. Okay. okay. Well, I I moved my orientation a little bit because I know it bothered Chad to look at the refrigerator. So. Well, I, I just kept expecting you to bring out list. snacks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that <What> host. <laughs> I do have some. Pretzels with mustard sauce over here on the oh, counter. That but anyway, good. yeah, it does. <laughs> let's move on. Also, uh, I must not forget we are partnering with Play Now Media, and they show the uh, decades of horror episodes on several of their streaming channels. Um, Classic Era is on Classic Sci Fi Movie Channel, the Classic Horror Movie Channel, the free Classic Horror Movie Channel. And then 70s and 80s is on Wicked Horror TV channel, the free horror movie channel. And, uh, you know, I have to straighten this out. There's a, uh, a retro horror one is only on Roku right now and may not, uh, we may not be able to get it on Amazon because they're being dinks. So... At any rate, we'll find out, and when they get Thanks. web links, we'll post them. But there's, uh, I don't know, eight or ten uh, 70s and 80s episodes up there now. Kind of cool. trying to fill that out, going uh, backwards as well. Okay, well, guess what? Chicken bite. This is a spoiler. Oh, you, you beat me. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, we're going to say all kinds of stuff about the movie. So, uh, the movie. For this <laughs> Holy episode, cow! I love that so. Much. I did too. <laughs> I'm like, let's be really scientific and use uh, I'm so labeling glad. tape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks like my last prostate exam. Oy, yay! Wow. <laughs> so before or after they sewed you shut there. I'm mind. all alone here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so our movie this episode is Fantastic Voyage. Released in 1966, directed by Richard Fleischer. Screenplay by Harry Kleiner. From an adaptation by David Duncan. That was adapted from a story by Otto Clement and Jerome Bixby, who in the movie is credited as J. Lewis Bixby. The cast is Stephen Boyd, Raquel Welch, Donald Pleasance, Arthur Kennedy, William Redfield, Edmund O'Brien and Arthur O'Connell. Production company is 20th Century Fox. It was filmed in LA 
And the production dates, it took a while on this one, June 25th to June, or January 25th, I'm sorry, to June 1965. Uh, Released in L.A. on August 24th, 1966, and in New York on September 7th, 1966. Uh, the budget is estimated to be $5,115,000, and the domestic box office, depending on where I looked, was 12 to $13.8 million. So not a great return on investment, but uh, I would say successful. The synopsis, a scientist is nearly assassinated. In, in order to save him, a submarine is shrunken to microscopic size and injected into his bloodstream with a small crew. Problems arise almost as soon as they enter it. I, I, whoever wrote this is like a small crew. <laughs> um, yeah, there was five people. <laughs> but they were very, very... Very small. So in order to save them, they, they draw a tremendous bullseye on the top of his head. <laughs> and it's not entirely, you know, I, they are trying to save him, but there's a, there's a reason they're trying to save him. So, yeah, they marked his, his head off in these quadrants and they used... Uh, label master. Yeah, they used a label tape, Dymo label tape to mark it off. I just loved it. Anyway, how are your map reading skills, Chad? My map reading skills are at optimum levels today, Jeff. <laughs> are they? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do some science in today, aren't we? <laughs> well, let's let's get into first impressions. So uh, uh, this is my pick. So yeah, go first. I'm gonna go first. Uh, I saw this movie um, in the theaters. And wow. I, I, I meant to look this up because I can't remember exactly what it was, but this was like a big deal. I, I'm surprised it didn't make more money because I remember this as being a really big deal at the time. Um, so I got, I actually won. So you walk in to the theater and they handed out these like promotional things. And I think they were like bookmarks and it was sort of like, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like a uh, biological terms for the parts of the things in the body that are in the movie. And I, and then I think there was like, you had to do a scratch off or something. And then you went up and looked at a list and, I, and you got, if I remember right, I won two free tickets to a future movie because I had the right term on my little bookmarky thing. Um, but anyway, I wish they still did stuff like that. That is awesome. I, too, <laughs> I, too. I mean, I, I really do have to look that up. I, it irritates me that I, Two or three times I thought about looking it up, but I didn't. So what the heck? Um, anyway, uh, a buddy and I went to this, and uh, I loved it then, and I love it now. I just I know it has some faults, but for 1966, it was a heck of a movie and a cool story, and made me think about it. It kind of fit right into my love for uh, the Incredible Shrinking Man. Um, and some, you know, there's there's a couple early horror movies. I think uh, is it Devil Dolls is that the one with Lionel Barrymore and he has the shrunken people, yeah, and then yeah. Bride of Frankenstein, and uh, is it Doctor Shrinker it... on Saturday morning? Oh, I love that show. <laughs> well, there was a there was a is it Doctor? I'll, I'll look it up here. Um, like Doctor Cyclops or something. Doctor Cyclops, yeah, around sure. 1940, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, this one I just I loved, um, and I'm sure there's lots of science problems in it. Uh, I picked it. The reason I picked it is because uh, after hearing of uh, Raquel Welch's passing, I thought, well, we ought to pick one of hers. Well, you pretty much got to go with Fantastic Voyage or One Million Years BC, and I couldn't find One Million Years BC mm -hmm. um, online streaming for free. And besides, she has a lot more dialogue in this one. <laughs> and this was a favorite of mine. So I'm, anyway, uh, and I have a DVD at home, but I'm not at home. So I couldn't, couldn't dig into the extras or anything. So anyway, I like it. I thought she did good. I thought the rest of the cast, it's like this, you know, uh, uh, Arthur Kennedy, 
um, Arthur O'Connell and Edmund O'Brien are like top notch uh, character actors in tons of stuff. I mean, tons of stuff, especially Edmund O'Brien and, and uh, uh, Arthur Kennedy. And they've been in other films that we've done. So anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. But let's, uh, I, I really love this. Whitney, what did you think? Have you seen this before? I've never seen this. Like this is this was a treat in a way because I mean I I vaguely remember seeing Raquel Welch and other things before, but this one, you know, like you said, you thought of um, the Incredible Shrinking Man. I thought a little bit about that and Pride of Frankenstein as well. But this one is a real adventure. Um, and then uh, seeing how her character did among like other male cast. Um, also the, the, the special effects like going in like to this person's body. It was just pretty, pretty intense. It was, and some of it was like, Hum there was a lot of humor to it, in my opinion, when it came to um, how things were delivered, how things were spoken among each other, even in dangerous situations. Like, oh, it's crystallizing, mm. but we'll get to that later. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it's it was fun. I, I enjoyed this one. Never seen it until recently. Pretty cool stuff. I lost my... Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Um, Daphne, what about you? Had you seen this before? And what did you think of it? I'm like Whitney. I, I think this is the first time I saw it beginning to end. I've seen bits of it, but I can't remember ever seeing the whole thing. So I think I've just like seen uh, stills and stuff like that. Um, Cause a lot of those I recognize, but this is the first time and I had so much fun. <laughs> I mean, it, I love how it looked. Um, I also think Raquel Welch, was awesome. And I didn't even know she was in this. I always think of her as in 1 million years BC mm. when I'm thinking about the older ones. So um, seeing her in this, I thought her character was awesome and she did a great job. And um, like, also like Whitney said, the humor, it, it was keeping me kind of laughing, you know, but I also was just sucked into the special effects. And um, I just, I just really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I was actually pretty surprised with how, how much I liked it. And I actually, even though I knew of the outcome, of course, I was still kind of like, oh, you know, oh, there's only a couple more seconds. And, ah, you know, and, and the whole time going, oh, come on, why are you reacting like this? You know, it's going to happen. But I was, I was invested in it. And um, I really, I really liked it. So I'm really glad we got to, oh, good. We, good. I got to see it finally. Um, excellent. Chad, I have this before. I have watchitated this movie on numerous occasions, Jeff. <laughs> numerous, and uh, I love this movie. It's uh, I watched it as a kid, and I used to. I was thinking, how are they floating a submarine around in this guy's ear ear canal? Is there water in there? So I remember going back to ask my parents, "Is do we have water in our bodies like that?" And they said, "Yeah, it's like seventy five percent." water and i'm like holy cow i'm just full of water i thought we were full of water that they could just swim this ship around in and uh so Heck yeah you know school was very tough on me especially in health, <laughs> health class after i watched all these movies yeah. but uh yeah this is this is my one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time um and I love how they tried to come get it as close as they could to like real, uh, real science with some of the terms and terminology and, and body parts and, and stuff like that. But I never knew the inside of the heart looked like, like that either. You know, just these wispy big things flying through that. And I was like, no wonder people have heart attacks. So I was very confused by this as a child, but I'm, much better now, and I understand how how this movie's supposed to work. Much better now. Yeah, I'm much better now. <laughs> Listen, man, let me come back inside. Uh, I I just like this movie, and I, I read a couple things about it that were kind of saying, ah, oh, it doesn't hold up. It's 
too slow and everything. And I'm like, I, I loved every part of the, uh, the way they did it. And in fact, how they, you know, they, they can stay shrunken for an hour and it's literally like an hour of the movie left when they shrink. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they like, it's almost real time when it comes to, to that. Um, all the time up till then, it was like, again, it starts out as a spy story, yep. almost. Right? Yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the story, the filming, everything. It's like, oh, what what's going on here? You know, what's this whole part? <laughs> well, before we go any farther, it's time for Taglines with Chad. Oh, my God, already? <laughs> okay, okay, we get it. <laughs> All I, right. I, I only tell you that I play it three times on purpose because I always forget to turn off the loop function. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, the taglines for Fantastic Voyage are as follows. Um, tagline number one, the screen's most fantastic voyage. Not, you know. Written by a guy named Wilbur. Not too ingenious. Yeah. Um, number two, the most science fiction-y science fiction <laughs> fiction ever conceived. <laughs> the most the, amazing science fiction ever conceived. You have to have hyperbole in taglines. You just do. <laughs> All right. Number three, you've never been here before. <laughs> That has so many That's, strange connotations. Yeah, that, it's like that you're could in a, be, yeah. That I, could be I a, have numerous not. Movies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, number four. A fantastic and spectacular voyage through the human body into the brain and out the poop chute. <laughs> now, that's not true. Head for the anus. You'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like it'll be like Jim Carrey coming to that rhinoceros for in that <laughs> Ventura. It's hot in here. Okay. All right. Anybody seen the movie Butt Boy? Mm-mm. Is that a? Did you guys review it on? We did. We yeah, did. I hadn't see it. I think I. I think Probably I a wise the decision. Review. <laughs> oh, I remember. I remember that now. Remember but that. it's a hoot. Anyway. <laughs> but, anyway, moving on. Anywho. <laughs> Journey into the body, living body of a man. Okay. Every eh? married dude knows what that feels like. <laughs> All right, and the last tagline for Fantastic Journey is four men and one woman on the most fantastic, spectacular, and terrifying journey of their lives and one woman. Woman. Did we mention (laughs) one woman? Well, there's one woman. Rated PG. There is one woman. And that's been Taglines with Chad. Oh, just one time that time? I was singing along. Yeah, well, I turned, I turned it off. <laughs> I did. So those are decidedly uh, generic taglines for the yeah. title. It's not even all that. Anyway. Wil- Wilbur was drinking on the job that day. Uh, yeah, so I got, you know me, posters galore. So there's one. I, I like that one a lot. We got to have the eyeball <laughs> yes. with the people falling yeah. out of it, even though you can't really tell that's what it is. And then mm-hmm. all of that writing at the bottom, all the actors. <laughs> the... Oh, my God. Parkour, parkour. <laughs> well, and this is where you feel, I feel like it's really a, like a spy movie or Referencing yeah. like the Cold yeah. War or something, just like all this, everything about this one. 
I never knew, I don't think I ever would have imagined that would be the movie that I would see if I saw this poster. No. No, I, no. I, I love the colors though, but it's Gulliver's Travels, yes. maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just about. Um, so then, and this is a, a variation on that, but they've added the the ship in there. Mm -hmm. We've got to get to this high spaceship from this <laughs> high in less than five minutes, or we're doomed again. And a little more. Oh my god, pew pew. Colorful and the, uh, I was totally going pew 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 when I was watching yeah. pew, when you yeah. first brought that <laughs> up. Yeah. Pew, pew. Firing that laser. Uh and then we get into some foreign language. I believe this is French. Well, they paid a lot awesome. for that eye drawing, didn't they? <laughs> they get a lot more uh, yeah, they they're getting, did. They're getting they, all the use out of it. A lot yeah. of mileage out of that. But then we get some like uh, you know, swirly colors in there too. And Raquel Welch with a massive laser gun. Who's holding the battery? <laughs> she knows how to handle a laser, yeah. yeah. Uh, another, oh, and this I think is a uh, Dutch and Belgian one. You know, we oh, kind of run uh -huh. into those dual title, dual language titles. The Fantastic. The eye is a lot bigger, and you can actually mm -hmm. see the people coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you might actually get an idea of the movie. And, of course, Italian. Yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. Well, the woman is very conservatively dressed in this one. For it, like She actually is. wore that outfit in the movie. They too. actually <laughs> stuck to the this, this story in this one. Um, and then uh, I believe... Ooh. I can't remember what this is. This this might be. Is this Spanish? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember, but yeah, that's psychedelic. Yeah, right? very groovy. Just a few drops of acid in the eyeball, and look what you get. Everybody shrinks, and yes. <laughs> Ooh, look at the pretty colors. Uh, and I believe this is Czech. Huh. I kind of like that one because it's got the shrinking on the side. And mm -hmm. Anyway, that is interesting. Yeah, that is. And then, in honor of our uh, former crewmate Joseph Perry, who always, I think, has a complete collection of these, the gold so cool. key version of Fantastic Voyage, the comic book. Cool. And what's that, Chad? That's very cool. It is. It is. And lastly, the uh, novelization cover. The Bantam paperback. Yes. Very nice. I'm telling you, the eye. <laughs> the eye it's is all about everywhere. the eye. Um, <laughs> now, it's important to note, for years, and I don't know if I knew it was different at the time, but I always thought that the book came first. That he wrote the book and then they made a movie about it. But that's not true, is it? No. I was really surprised to read that. But Isaac so Asimov, they commissioned man, him what to a write hack. the novelization, Isaac <laughs> Asimov. And uh, he said there's too many plot holes in it, so I'll only yeah. do it if I can like do my own story. Uh -huh. And they said, okay, yeah, sure. Well, then there was so many delays with the special effects and stuff that the book ended up coming, and, and Asimov writes so quickly that the book ended up coming out like several months before the movie came out. So I, I can see how people would get that confused. Yeah. But it does say novelization on the, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the fine print up top mm -hmm. there. Anyway. I could totally see that. That's why I was really surprised when I read that because... <clears throat> I would never think that the novelization of the movie would come out before the actual movie. I just assumed it was based on it. Right, right. And it wasn't by Alan Dean Foster either. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. No, Alan Dean Foster. <laughs> that might have come out. But... That came a little later. <laughs> so, yeah, 1966. I'm just like, uh, wow. All right. Well, let's uh, – here's the uh, – the crew, and I've got a mixture of, uh, you know, full pictures, slides, and sort of narrowed, centered ones, just 
for visual purposes. Um, so that's the crew. So we've got Raquel Welch on the left, who is the technical assistant for Dr. Duval. Next to her, Arthur Kennedy. And Donald Pleasance, who is Dr. Michaels. I was going to say, there's Donald Pleasance, who, the man who never plays a sane person <laughs> in any movie he's in. He's the... Uh, He's like the medical dude in charge. He's supposed mm -hmm. to be in charge of the mission. But. Uh -huh. And then to the right is Stephen Boyd as Grant, who was, I don't know, I would I would compare him to like sort of a CIA agent, ex-frogman mm -hmm. that knew the doctor. He's the one that smuggled this doctor out of wherever he was. And, and the reason we need the doctor alive is because he knows the secret to shrinking people and having it last forever, apparently, instead of only an hour. And, and of course, if your shrinkage wants. lasts more than four hours, consult a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> consult your doctor. And then the guy at the top is uh, William Redfield, and he's the uh, like the guy that designed the ship, and he's sort of the the ship's uh, pilot, skipper, captain, etc. He rides in his little bubble turret on top. This is a great photo. And uh, it it's it's so cool that they built the set like this. So you can get, a, yeah. you know, from the outside in that you could get photos like this. I mean, because that this looks awesome. Yeah, and then the only other two people we really have much interaction with are uh, the yeah. general and the colonel. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien is general. I forget his name off the top of my head. Sugar baby. General Sugar Carter. Baby. <laughs> uh, and uh, Arthur O'Donnell, or O'Connell, I'm sorry, Arthur O'Connell is Colonel Reed. Um, and <laughs> I, I picked that you know me. I picked that picture of Edmund O'Brien because he's out. He's sciencing with his slide rule. It's, it's very <laughs> smart like, man. This is so yeah. cool. I think it's just, it's actually whipped yeah. out his slide rule. Yeah, that slide rule scene <laughs> reminded me of every time Jethro Bodine had to count something up on the had something on the Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> Let's see, two alts. You carried one. Two alt alts. Alt. If you stop his heart, how long can you do it? <laughs> Maximum. Uh, now, but he doesn't die. Then he doesn't die. Throw out a number. 54 seconds. 50, 57 seconds. Yeah, well, they, we could do it 57. Very yeah. impressive. Uh, and they, they both have that CMDF uh, <laughs> insignia, which uh, I'm sure everybody knows what that stands for now, right? <laughs> it just, it's, it's lovely. You know what it could have stood. <laughs> I wrote it down somewhere, but now I don't, I don't see it. So I guess I didn't. I don't know. I think it's something for miniaturizing, I think I remember. Well, it's miniaturized like, deterrence mm -hmm. force, but I can't remember what this yeah. stands for. <laughs> Center or yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> and I I how did these so these guys <laughs> Edmund O'Brien is like the blustery comic relief, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got I, that calculation I, from a slide rule? And he's, yeah, 54 he's, seconds, give or take. He's the one that's got the line about the sugar, too, because he's had... Mm -hmm. There's one of those restaurant things of sugar that you pour. It just pours out. Yeah. It's slowly, <laughs> as the movie goes, it's slowly going down until there's none, there's none so, left. So the, that's like in an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so funny. Maybe maybe slightly more than an hour, but not much. But when he looked down and he saw the ants going through, that was right. a nice touch. That was a yes, nice that was very nice. It was. Yeah, it was. I looked it up. It is combined miniature defense force. Combined, combined. miniature defense force. Are. CMDF. Yeah. Give me a word that starts like with C. Five. I don't know. The center one <laughs> is like, like a symbol. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's some sort of logo or something. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, they, I like that ant scene too. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool that they brought oh. that in there. A little bit of, a little bit of morality there. Oh, oh when he was going, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's there's there's like two places where they talk like they, they could have got into a philosophy thing, and mm-hmm. that's the first one, or, or maybe the second one. I don't remember. Uh, the second one, he yells ants and starts smashing them. All. Yeah, he goes to <laughs> stick it with his thumb and he stops because he's thinking about the size, right? And right. people being yeah. that small and that they have a life. And mm-hmm. Arthur O'Connell goes, Pretty soon you're going to be Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm like, What? <laughs> all life matters. Yeah, that was a, that was, that whole scene kind of took me a little back. Like, I was. Wow, I was not expecting something like that. <laughs> How did that get in there? Yeah. Well, then there's the other one where uh, I think it's Donald Pleasant, so Dr. Michaels and Arthur Kennedy, the uh, Dr. Duval. Dr. Duval's all God impressed with the yeah. function of life and, and, yeah. What does what does Donald Pleasant say? Something like, uh, "Well, you're an idiot." It's yeah. not that big a deal. It's just a chemical reaction, and yeah. interchange of gases, and well, so that that's like the one point where they almost got into a, a evolution versus mm-hmm. divine guidance mm-hmm. thing, uh, but then immediately something happens and they have right. to run the other way, uh-huh. you know? yeah. and that's never brought up again. Just give them a taste. <laughs> Leave him wanting more. Yeah, yeah. Leave him wanting more. <laughs> Save the philosophical stuff for Scorsese exactly. and those guys. Well, I love it. Ed O'Brien's one of those guys that's been around for mm-hmm. a long time, but he's done a ton of really good film noir. Uh, the, the most, the one I can think of, the most obvious is DOA, the, the first version of DOA, uh, where he gets poisoned and he's going to die in like twenty four hours and frantically races around trying to figure out who's tried to kill him. Um, and I think, wasn't he in uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance? There I go again. I don't know about that, but I think that I read that he was in The Hitchhiker. Oh, he was. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah, yes. and I was trying to imagine his younger, you know, uh, his younger face, Um in there, but yeah, I think he played one of the two, two guys in, uh, on the trip. He did. That was a good movie. Yeah. He did a good job in that movie, too. Um, let's see. He was in The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance. Longest day. You just go down a list and he's in, like, everything. Great actor. I was thinking and excellent slide slide rule man yeah <laughs> quick quick with the slide rule uh he won an oscar for best supporting actor in uh the barefoot contessa oh i'm sorry best actor no best supporting actor the barefoot contessa so anyway he's i like him a lot and arthur o'connell what i remember him from is I believe there was a TV series called uh, something like, was it the first hundred years or something like that? Does that ring a bell to anybody? TV Uh show? Yeah. In the, in the late sixties. And I remember it starred uh, Monty Markham. I'm sure you know who that is too. I I know Monty Markham. Yeah, he was in the the uh, that horror movie with uh, Barbara Crampton here recently that Ted Koga did, um, which I can't think of the title of. Just I definitely give me recognize a his minute. face. I recognize his face for sure. His hmm. father or grandfather is Monty Barkham, and he's thawed out of a glacier in like Canada or Alaska or something, and he's alive. Hmm. So this old man has his grandfather, who's a younger guy, learning about the new society. Mm. That was a basis behind it. Um, that's assuming he was in it. The second hundred years, that's it. Mm. 
apparently it appealed to me. It was only on for one year. Um, anyway, guys, uh, well, who's the, who's the, who's the one we really want to talk about? Is there one we really want to talk about? <laughs> There she well, is, and, and she's sciencing. <laughs> there she's she is. The, she's the laser rifle, uh, keeper of the mm -hmm. laser rifle. If only she'd have had that one billion BC. <laughs> <laughs> the costume? That and the, and the laser. It's the well, laser. I noticed. Yeah. You know, so the one in the top picture, uh, there everybody's wearing coveralls to start with. But as soon as they mm -hmm. have to go out into the body, it's they strip out of their coveralls. So she's mm -hmm. the only one that we see take her coveralls. Yes, off. I noticed that too. Even though she's got the <laughs> full wetsuit on underneath, yeah. it's still. Uh, yeah. but, but but why though? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Why what? Why? Why Why'd they make up? her only her? Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's some people out there that would want to see the guys undress. <laughs> I was afraid it wasn't going to weather well, but she does. She does pretty well at uh, warding off the mm -hmm. chauvinist comments. I guess mm -hmm. there was a couple times, and I um, I was really I've been trying really hard not to roll my eyes because <laughs> it's just gross and so i was successful in not rolling my eyes but i definitely let a couple oh brothers come out when i was listening to some of the the uh the guy talking to her you know checking her out all that stuff oh. was pretty well but right anyway, off the i bat, took it though, as part right off the bat and I, I took it as part i just thought it was i just took it as part of the humor you know like it made me think almost like my man flint or you know, I had to inc incorporate some of that humor into it. And then later on, when um, you kind of see the rest of the humor coming out, you're like, okay, this is, this is a little bit of the flavor that they're trying to, to bring into this movie. Well, the first one is Arthur O'Connell's character says, you can't have a woman on a mission this important. Uh -huh. I refuse. <laughs> I won't let it happen or something like that. <laughs> Said in every sci-fi movie where there's a woman. Every sci-fi uh, movie where they're going on a... <laughs> Can't bring a woman along. It's bad luck. Everybody mentor. knows that, but she's beautiful, though. I can't <laughs> wait to see her change. But her mentor insists that she comes, mm -hmm. and uh, Donald Pleasant says that's cool with me, and he's the one in charge. So mm -hmm. they back down. Uh, and then you're talking about that shot there in the middle where she Stephen Boyd comes in to put his moves on her, and. Mm -hmm. and uh, could you put Her your grant. hand in front of the laser, please? Uh, <laughs> you look closer. Yeah. And she says, she has this line that's like, that'll teach you where to put your hand yeah. or something like that, which yeah. I thought yeah. was a great that was, down. Yeah. And, uh, Just wild dogs running the streets <laughs> in inner space. Well, I also like where, you know, when the laser comes loose and busts, then at first it sounds like they're going to blame her, mm -hmm. but then they... They they believe what she says. They take they mm -hmm. give her credibility yeah. and everything. So anyway, and she's the one that figures out. Here's what we need to fix the laser. You mm -hmm. know, we need this. We need that. Boyd finds the parts, but she's the one that knows the laser and knows that mm -hmm. uh, they need a, their transistor and this little tiny thin wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like after once we got the trip going, there was respect, you know, between the scientists. Well, she had the laser. She had the laser. She, had, she was in charge. They, they had to stay. In <laughs> she had the laser and she had well, the wetsuit. suit. And so. I kind of like too. She only, I mean, I thought we were going to make it the whole way, but she only screams once that I can remember. I mean, and it hit me pretty because I think it's when she gets stuck in those things. Yes. Uh, uh huh. Antibodies. Or the um, oh the, the antibodies come probably yeah it's, it's oh like in, in that, the follicles or whatever the, the hair, hair. Yeah. Ear yeah. hairs mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 which was good they refrained from you know yeah sh shrieking all the time and there's nothing that happens to her that couldn't happen to anybody else it doesn't well and I also felt like 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just saying nobody makes any cracks about. Told you we shouldn't have a woman on there. This mm -hmm. is what happens, or anything like that. It was she was a, a part of the crew. Yeah, definitely. And I was thinking part of the fear that she had, I felt like they did a, a good job being like, well, they all know what's going to happen. You know, it's like if she jiggles those things around, the antibodies are going to come. So it's like she was afraid because she knew what was coming, because, you know, that she understood the anatomy, mm -hmm. that the, what what the threat was. I kind of um, I kind of took it that way. And I feel like they all kind of took it that way. Um, that that's what the fear was. She had limited time before the antibodies came and started um, attacking them all. Who wouldn't be scared what? of that? Yeah, no kidding. Whitney, what did you think <laughs> about Rebecca Welch in this movie and as just like the way her part was written and, and uh, how she performed? Well, I I just thought her performance was was pretty was pretty awesome, really. I mean, it's the I mean, you guys have pretty much said some of the stuff I thought about, like she, um, the way she um, expressed in the beginning, you know, after her mentor had brought her on and she was, she also made it clear like, oh, you know, she wanted to be there, you know, um, also, I mean, I, I very much love how she um, handled things without what people would say is like a, a scream um, kind of chick, but uh, no, she, she was very much, um, she very much held her own, um, especially with the, the comments, misogyny, all that kind of thing. I mean, like you guys said, she, she had the gun, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, no, especially when she, you know, like met, with that one um like with all the special effects going on and when she got tangled up and i'm sorry words escape me um and then when they pulled what was what is that stuff that was on her the yeah, antibodies yeah 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 no i i mean i feel like um just i was pretty much um I don't know. I, I was lost. I'm lost for words on how the the effects were on her, um, and how she and she just really carried her performance well. And I'm not really good at expressing it tonight. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but no, I really, I really think she was a badass. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's always been more of a, uh, than just a pretty face. I mean, she yes. could act. She really mm -hmm. could act, and. Um, not only could she act, but she commanded the scenes she was mm -hmm. in. And she sort of overshadowed most of her uh, co-stars, in my mm -hmm. opinion, uh, in a lot of movies that she was in. And especially in One Million Years B.C., she she had to do a lot of acting without words. Mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a to me, that was more awesome, a more awesome performance because she had to express all these things without speaking you know uh to a large extent and um so but but she was good here too i mean she um after they got all done with all the prerequisite um men or pigs uh scenes hmm. uh they pretty much uh, accepted her as a fellow teammate and a fellow scientist which was pretty cool too yeah, I think these are she had pretty much her 66, I think. I mean, I think she was a like a pinup girl kind of reputation before this. Because, I mean, she's she got second billing on this movie. But if you look at her credits before this, there's not really anything there. I mean, there's a few spot things on TV series. Uh, things like she was in a movie called Do Not Disturb. And it says she played woman in lobby. I remember was she was she in an Elvis movie too? Um, I thought I thought she was in an Elvis movie. It's possible. There's one here called "A Swinging Summer." Is that Elvis? I don't no, know. it's not. It's not. So I don't know. Um, oh, roustabout. Yeah, she was. In but. That. 
she didn't i mean her part was a uh, college girl or something like that mm -hmm. i mean it wasn't like a don't forget mother jugs and speed <laughs> well that's <laughs> That comes later. <laughs> yeah. That comes later. Uh, but, I mean, if you look at this, she's in a movie in 64 called A House Is Not a Home, and she played a call girl. Mm -hmm. She's in The Virginian, an episode of that. She plays Saloon Girl. An episode of Bewitch, she plays Stewardess. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the kind of part she was getting. She's mm -hmm. Lieutenant Wilson on McHale's Navy, but knowing, uh, having watched a lot of McHale's Navy, I can kind of imagine what most of the show was joke centered around. Uh, if, if that's true, I don't know. Um, and then boom, in 1966, fantastic voyage in 1 million years BC. Also bon Bandolero with Dean Martin. Yeah. Uh, she um, played in a movie called 100 rivals with Jim Brown, Burt Reynolds. Right, and that's sort of a, as she took off, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is a pretty big role for someone who had the just kind of smaller roles up to this yeah. point. Yeah, well, I, that's what I'm saying, because she mm -hmm. is she does get second billing, so I'm thinking mm -hmm. she must have already had a reputation from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it was as a, uh, you know, based on her beauty or, or mm -hmm. looks or whatever. Lady in Cement is another one. I think that was with Frank Sinatra. Um. What else? Oh, Hanny Calder. I always kind of liked Hanny Calder. I mean, yeah. it's it's good sort revenge of, movie. Yeah, it's sort of cheesy, but it's kind of like a spaghetti western where mm -hmm. the man with no name is wrecking wealth. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that sounds really cool. I want to. Yeah. I want to. Uh, I want to watch that. <laughs> somebody, uh, I love it. it. I love it. Yeah, Robert Culp. Does he? Is it Christopher Lee in that? Doesn't he build their gun? What's it called again, you guys? Hanny Calder. Hanny Calder. C A U L D E R. Okay. That looks really cool. Yeah, oh, Robert. I feel like I've seen pictures of of this yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. So the poster has uh, Jack Ernest. Elam, Struther mm -hmm. Martin, and Ernest Borgnine, Ernest Borgnine, on it, Borgnine which is awesome. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Robert Culp's in it. Christopher Lee um, as a gunsmith, Bailey. Yeah. See, I think mm -hmm. Robert Culp teaches her how to shoot. He's a gunslinger. Or an ex gunslinger yeah. trains and, her to be a gunfighter, and yeah. uh, he takes her to Christopher Lee for him to build a gun for her. You know, it's, it's got to have all the right parts and balance and all that stuff. It's... Very cool. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch that. What but yeah, it's idea. a revenge movie. What is somebody or it's a family or oh, she's raped and her uh -huh. husband murdered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robert Culp, Christopher Lee, Raquel Welch, Ernest Borg Borgnine. Yeah. Cool. I like That's a good movie. I liked it. Uh, it says, uh, oh, yeah, it was uh, met with Tony Tenser of Tygon, British Film Productions. So did they? Yeah. I yeah. saw that. Oh, it's Tygon. Okay. Um, but it's a, a bunch of those, you know, Kansas City Bomber. Do you remember that one, Chad? Was a roller derby? Kind of. I kind. I kind of do. I may have seen that. She was in the uh, Three Musketeers and Four Musketeers. So anyway, she had a she had a good run in the uh, late sixties and seventies in terms of the mm -hmm. movies she was in and uh, who she was paired with, etc. Anyway. I, I liked her in this, and and they yeah. didn't play up the, you know, you get a little bit of that with the, with the wetsuit profile and the mm -hmm. taking her clothes, taking her, mm -hmm. taking her overalls off. But other than that, they didn't really, there was no, really played up side. So anyway, gosh, darn no, it. no kissy kissy, no. <laughs> gosh darn it! Gosh, gosh darn it! Straight out. Sciencing. That's all it was. <laughs> she was super sciencing. Speaking of which, I do have some. Oh, first, first we got to talk about. So I got to tell you, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> there's yeah, not a pleasant to the top pictures after this. So they, 
this the scientists these people try to capture him and they and in the chase scene he's in a car accident damages he gets a blood cloud out of the brain so the whole thing is they got to shrink this ship down and go in because the blood clot's in the middle of his brain so they got to take the ship and journey inside of his head and shoot the blood clot with their teeny tiny <laughs> laser rifle <laughs> from from the inside and uh so that's a surgical they, precision yeah that's why they need this top surgeon and there's who a works two with stage, lasers <laughs> yes there's a two-stage uh uh shrinking process first they shrink them down to a certain size and then the world the world's most sophisticated machinery is brought in yeah the forklift and i forget yeah. what it says on the side it says something like uh <laughs> something material handling device <laughs> like uh I, I can't think i can't think of the word i want uh, -huh. uh but it's this great big thing with this tiny tiny fork sticking up and down <laughs> <laughs> they, all, they almost yeah. drop it three times yeah. before they get there. So then they put him in this giant hypodermic. That's so that's where he is there. He's in the giant hypodermic before they shrink that down. And I just put that up because I thought we know we know that there's a a, a saboteur on board. Mm -hmm. or we're pretty sure there's a saboteur on board, and they think it's Arthur Kennedy, Recco Welch's uh, mentor, Duval, and. Uh, Dr. Michaels, Donald Pleasance is the uh, head guy. And I'm thinking, you're looking for people that might be a saboteur. Mm -hmm. Do you trust that guy in that bottom right. picture? Right. <laughs> no. Holy cow. Yeah. That was the one thing. It's like, I wish I would have seen this a while ago because as soon as I saw Donald Pleasance, I was, he's the, he's the saboteur. Yeah. As, as, as soon as he <laughs> tried to blame it on the doctor. That's not even, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and so true. later on when stuff was happening, I was like, no, it, okay, whatever. How are they going to try and make us think it's someone else? Mm. We we know it's Donald Pleasant. It's, it's Donald Pleasant. <laughs> it's Donald Pleasant. They actually had Who else would it be? <laughs> I was like, could he actually be playing a heroic role in it? Oh. Right. Are they really screwing with us and like yeah. making you think it's... <laughs> then goes, well, every... I think it's so-and-so. He's kind Salvatore. of funny, though, because every time something happens, ah, we got to go back. We got to scratch the mission. <laughs> <laughs> that everybody else thinks of a way around it. He's kind of like, okay. I, I'll try Doesn't that. even try. <laughs> yeah. Can't be too obvious. Time to go back. Um, hey, number anyway, one. I, just, I love that. <laughs> and he does some, he does some major, uh, 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 you, you got to get the Donald Pleasance. See, I got these all scattered around and they didn't label them very well, but I think I can figure it out. Yes. Uh, this is when he goes uh, full <laughs> Donald Pleasant. <laughs> yeah. He's not screaming like that, you know. <laughs> that last I love one. It when he does that. Nobody <laughs> can do that like. It. And he's killed by the white corpuscle. <laughs> yes, that was pretty amazing to me. It was a pretty good effect. Yeah. yeah. God, it was awesome. No. I Especially when I'm like, I'm like 13 in a theater watching this and going, oh my God, this is like the white blob. <laughs> it did come like specifically for him, didn't it? It sure seemed that way. It seemed that way, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I was probably going for the ship because the ship was the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. it rammed part of the brain. Yeah. But his head was sticking out top, so it got him first. Well, because he knocked out the captain and mm -hmm. was trying to ruin the mission. Yeah. But instead, Dr. That's Duval right, though. shot him with the laser. Full Donald Pleasance. Full yes. on Donald Pleasance. That was one powerful out. laser. One little zap and the whole corpuscle just disappeared. Mm -hmm. They ripped open a big... <laughs> Slice down the side of the ship. Good thing you had your anti corpuscle laser beam gun. <laughs> exactly. Switch to anti corpuscle mode. <laughs> you notice. You made Switch me from of... stun to anti corpuscle. <laughs> so, did you notice uh, some of the usual? Uh, it's like this. Star, this is right when. Uh, right about when Star Trek started, too. Uh, and. 
see the Star Trek action when they were in the whirlpool. <laughs> their body, they oh, yeah. had to yeah. throw their bodies around <laughs> to make it oh, look like yeah. they're under, look like they're in a silly silo or something. Especially, <laughs> especially with the scene where, um, with the hearing, you, with what was it, scissors or something that were dropped. And then oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. that that was kind of that was going on in that ear and in, in, inside right there, like because I, I guess. Well, oh, yeah. when they did that <laughs> and they said, we need complete silence, no sound whatsoever. You can just yes. the whole thing. Yes. You knew they were going to try <laughs> You did. You did. Um, Some just in that nurse just went, here, doctor, oh. you're sweating. <laughs> The scalpel falls on the floor. Not that so you know, that was that was part of that was another thing that was sort of part of humor to me. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably yeah. sick humor, but I thought, oh yeah. man, yeah. It, it, that's just that's just how things I was the same way. I was the yeah. same way. No, as that soon was as they said great. it, I was like, yeah. which one it of these idiots great. is gonna drop <laughs> right, something right. on the floor? Right. And then they totally milked it with her looking, and then there's the tool mm. and everything, and it just that yeah, was very slow, and you pull it, and it inches forward, and it showed it the doctor down. sweating, and then it showed right. her behind him. And I went, <laughs> "She's the one. She's gonna exactly. do it. She's gonna ruin it. Mm -hmm. Ruin He's her." Goody two shoes is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it clangs on the floor, and then you show the people inside the ear, and they're all they're flying yes. all over the place, and they go through that whole scene, and then you go back to the operating room, <laughs> and and finally. She goes up and wipes her forehead. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. All of that so you can wipe his forehead and then you didn't even do it. Right away. I don't know. Don't press the red candy like button. He's sweating so profusely. I must dab his brow. My, uh, my job is to dab. Should I stand here? They were good. Oh, um, that was that was really good. She did her so, thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I played nurse who screwed things up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sweaty doctor. Sweaty. Do yeah, I was sweaty doctor too. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I call this sciencing the uh yes. <laughs> oh my god i forgot about the little, the little those, things. Things, those <laughs> things oh my gosh and then he's like somebody makes a statement later <laughs> i think it's a general he goes this could be tracking the the radar just <laughs> tracking the atomic nuclear particle going that's eh, not the way radar works i don't think uh they might have a sensor that's Sensing the nuclear particle, but it's not radar. As a kid, uh, I thought those things were claws that were going to pop out to clamp <laughs> down on him. I wondered what they were at first. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's it was, so great. It's just so it great. Is. It know. is. And then he holds up the, it's like the teeny tiny particle of uh, nuclear material that's so small that you can't even have to worry about the radiation mm -hmm. but the shrinking process doesn't shrink nuclear material mm -hmm. so when the ship shrinks down now this will be just the right size mm -hmm. i guess i don't know he's holding it up the other guy's looking like a monkey looking at somebody do something behind the glass at the zoo <laughs> And then, and then the bottom one is like, you know, you, you, in every spy show, you got a tracker on somebody and you're following them on these maps. Well, here we got the <laughs> the body and they keep flipping over new layers. Here's the mm, arterial exactly. flow. Here's the venous flow. Here's the... And, and I want to be the guy that puts the little button oh, yeah. as it's moving. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what he gets paid a year. He just he just goes up and moves it. It isn't even it's automated. Right? It's like a, so it's good. like the old uh, you know battle maps. You know we have to yeah. move the, the little mm. box around. So. But it's, I do it's kind of like cool. how they. I still yeah. kind of like how they incorporated some of that, like in the navigation of the of the ship. Where he was like, "Oh, we're gonna go off course, so I'm gonna, you know, pull down this map and bring out all these cool tools and tell you where to go." And it was, 
I thought that was kind of cool. I, I'm sure it wasn't legit, but I thought it, I really liked that. <laughs> yeah, he had all those tubes on the side with mm -hmm. all their charts in it that were all parts of the yeah. body and close-ups and stuff. And mm -hmm. then I thought it was cool when he, so that's unveiled, but that's like right above where the two hidden seats come out, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I yeah. thought was cool too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, anyway. A I miracle thought, in engineering. Yeah, exactly. There was just like, so then the guy that designed it, um, Captain Owen says, it just, I, I mean, I realize they don't have a lot of time, but he's like telling them to do stuff that they don't know where this stuff is. Oh, it's back there to the left of the. Yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, because like, there, there was no testing of this. No, we didn't this cover beforehand. anything. <laughs> yeah, there's the controls there's... for your station. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. What anyway. does this handle do? <laughs> no, it flushes its own. <laughs> and then he tells, he and Donald Pleasant figures out how to run this thing because he's asking the guy how he's going to see the charts. And he goes, oh, come on up here and I'll show it to you. And he sits down. And he's got the, you know, it's like a gaming control, basically. And he goes, see, just like this, pretty much a button for everything. That's that's it. That's how Donald Plans learns how to drive that thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I got, I do have a bunch of uh, sort of effects and sort of bigger ones. Let's see here if I can remember which ones these are. Um, ah. The mm -hmm. I love if that. you put your finger yeah. here on her carotid. <laughs> so what was that squeezed. story you were talking about, Daphne? <laughs> oh, yeah, about the, yeah. I was, let me try, see if I can find it again. She but I so thought that was a really good boobs. scene. Yeah, I know. It was, it was. It was a really good scene. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and the, those things come flying at, at the uh, interlopers, you know, the foreign bodies. Uh, to kill him, it's going to treat her like a bacteria. Which would have been mm -hmm. a better uh, title for the movie. <laughs> Foreign Bodies. Okay. But <laughs> I'll be here all week. Tip your way. Four men, they're... one woman, mm -hmm. foreign bodies. <laughs> Battle. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and the so the antibodies are like they could they like get tighter and tighter but then at some point they crystallize apparently when they get out on the in the air and then they come off but she's she's pretty shook up there yeah. so the director th did you find it daphne yeah it says when filming the scene um where the other crew members remove attacking antibodies from raquel welch for the first time Director Fleischer allowed the actors to grab what they pleased. Gentlemen all, they specifically avoided removing them from Welch's breasts with an end result that Fleischer described as a Las Vegas showgirl effect. He pointed <laughs> the, the, this out. <laughs> the antibody bra? Is that the... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's not, I think you're right. At first I was figuring out, what does that mean? He pointed this out to the cast members and on the second try, the actors all reached for her breasts. Finally, Fleischer realized that he would have to choreograph who removed what from where, and the result is seen in the final cut. What an awkward situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first time they all are like, oh, no, I'm not going to be the first oh. one. And the second time they're going, oh, oh, oh we get cut. I was doing it. <laughs> anyway. And she's going, oh, geez. <laughs> right. <laughs> three times. I got to do this three times. <laughs> Um, well, let's, I, before I show any more of these pictures, I want to uh, talk about the the special effects and stuff, which is just so cool. Those were awesome. Yeah. Um, so this movie had uh, won two Oscars, one for best art direction and set decoration. And the people that won those are Jack Martin Smith, Dale Hennessy, Walter M. Scott and Stuart A. Rice. And then best effects for special visual effects went to Art Crookshank. And then nominated were best cinematography, Ernest Laszlo, 
best film editing, William B. Murphy, and best uh, best effects, sound effects, Walter Rossi. So I I, re- I think it was on this uh, video. Daphne shared mm-hmm. this video with us. It looked like it was probably a short that yeah. came with the DVD. Yeah, I think it was an extra. I was I was trying to see if I can get a hold of the the uh, there was a special edition several years ago that had I think that um you can I saw it on YouTube, but I think it's just an interview with some with some folks talking about it. But the set design is so awesome. Oh my god, I love the set design. <laughs> and um, you know, the special effects are great, but I just that that was really amazing what they did. I I, I thought it was great. Yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff. The way they represented the body, body parts, mm-hmm. the the lungs being so dry, and the mm-hmm. the black spots in there that were foreign material that exactly, had yeah. the lungs. That was pretty cool. Cool stuff. Well, on the film, they listed in the credits. They listed uh, big effects, and it listed L. B. Abbott, which I think was Bill Abbott, uh, Art Crookshank. And Emil Cosa Jr. And Emil Cosa Jr. was like a uh, matte painting specialist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Abbott said he turned in Crookshank. He was the head of Fox's visual effects department, or and uh, he put in Crookshank's name for the Oscar because he wanted him to get his due. Because he did, yeah, because didn't he like have, they needed some people to work on it. And so they got in touch with him and he did a big chunk of it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Abbott, Abbott didn't have time to totally do it. So they mm-hmm. uh, uh, him do it. So it, anyway, I, I, I've always wanted that last name, Crookshank. I know, Crookshank is awesome. <laughs> Chad Crookshank. Crookshank. Oh, it's perfect. Then I would go into private detection mm-hmm. so I could say Chad P. Crookshank, I. private eye. <laughs> well, the other thing. I'd have a sidekick. <laughs> what would his name be? Or her? Uh, I don't know. Shanky. <laughs> Shank. <laughs> Little Shank. <laughs> Little Shank. <laughs> <laughs> the kid who wanted to you to be his mentor. Yeah, and I really didn't want to be. So you I didn't want to, but yeah, you were. I told him I would. I would if you'd call yourself Little Shank. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how my, that's how I envision my future. So we've got some some other stuff on here. <laughs> You're just gonna run right over that, Jeff. You're I am. I am. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's stealing the ideas. What he's doing right now. Yeah. He's writing it all down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You can't be me. <laughs> I wanted to mention Marcel Delgado, which isn't, I don't think he's listed on the film credits, but in IMDb, it lists him as uncredited for uh, miniatures. Mini- miniatures. Mm. He worked with Willis O'Brien on King Kong and the Lost World. Wow. So he'd been doing that stuff for years and never gets, you know, you just don't get a credit for that. Um, most Dangerous Game, King Kong, Son of Kong, The Wizard of Oz, Mighty Joe Young, War of the Worlds, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Wow. Uh, Dinosaurus, mm-hmm. 1960. So, uh, and he was a guy Willis O'Brien went after. He was a, somebody that wanted to be an artist. And Willis O'Brien was trying to get him. And he's like, no, I don't want to be do movies. I want to be an artist. And Will O'Brien got him to come to his shop and show him the stop motion studio that he had, and that apparently got him into it. So, oh, wow. um, well, that's really all, awesome because we kind of talked about how they built the set to get some of the kind of inside out, you know, views from the outside in. But I'm sure that there was a ton of miniature stuff, and it I felt like it it all looked good together. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other something else I saw somewhere now, this might have been on that short too. So, in the opening credits, there's no music, Mm. and all you hear is these weird sound effects like typewriter keys and beep, Mm -hmm. bop, boops, and stuff like that. Apparently, those were a standard thing called hickey effects that were done by a guy named Ralph Hickey. 
for the movie Desk Set with uh, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. When I saw those, I thought I was transported and was so happy because I just felt like so many TV movies from the 70s where they started off like with that, with like just um, I can think of a couple of Columbo episodes where it's like you hear the key, the keyboards tapping. And yeah, yeah. Um, I was just I, I loved that. <laughs> I loved the beginning of it like that without any music. But I didn't put together that there was no music. Um, and then. I think I read that too, what you said about uh, Hickey and it's like, they just had this stuff and then they just used it. Hickey is also oh, a great cool name. And it's used, if you think about it, they're probably used, they're probably used all the time on like Star Trek and other mm -hmm. science fiction, low budget series of the time. All right. So I, I wanted to bring up that stuff about the special fit. My dad would never let me come home with Hickey effect. <laughs> yeah, was, okay. I don't know what to say about that. Live the sheltered life. So here are some of the effects. This is the top one is uh, the shot from inside, watching one of the scientists look at the shrunken <laughs> ship. I love it. <laughs> I so cool. just the body that that was just such a cool world you know uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. it's almost like something they would do for uh i can't think of the name of it now what's the horror movie silent hill or something you know where you, oh, you like, like you go into another something. dimension or, mm -hmm. or uh well, it made me think of Planet of the Vampires a little bit as far as like, because yes. I think I was, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I was like, this reminds me of Planet of the Vampires. And it, and I think it's because it, I don't know, there was just like, it was so artistic also as like had texture and had all yeah. this cool, and it was another world, but you knew what it was kind of yeah. because it was in the body. And so it, oh, it was just awesome. I think well, the reason well, why it, it reminds, yes, I could see it reminding you of Planet of the Vampires because of the colors, the mm -hmm. textures. I mean, and like just knowing how things were interpreted from the body. Mm -hmm. um, it was just pretty wild just seeing how things were kind of foreign. Like even that like green, like more, it, it wasn't that substance, that green substance that they just showed like kind of floating. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not good with naming these terms tonight. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no. okay. you know they didn't mean. really name him. It was like goop floating around. And then yeah. someone told you, that, oh, that's the blah, blah, blah. Right, And then, right. It, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, they well, started. Some, so some of the stuff looked like the, like I think the middle one was supposed to be the heart, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it was something else, but. But a lot of the muscle, when they were around, yeah. you could see the actual, they were shaped just like real muscle cells. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, right. they had and the like, cells in there, like you'd see in an anatomy book. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, then, yeah. and then you have stuff like in the middle where it looks like it's uh, they're going through a haunted house. <laughs> exactly. In the year 2040. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I forget what the things were on the bottom, but isn't that the... Uh... Oh, the that's things right. they got in the lymphatic system or something. Yes. They yeah, like, they got in the vents, and so it was overheating, overheating. or something. Yeah. They pull them all out and stuff. Uh, then, so, so the bottom one is, I think that's the, I got I to gotta enlarge it. Yeah, that's the <laughs> ship. And I think that was after they got sucked into... They got sucked from an artery into a vein. To a vein, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that, through a, the through blue a was oxygenated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was the, the stuff that was, well, it was deoxygenated, right? It had lost, it had already delivered the, anyway, at any rate, yeah. it was the veins. <laughs> like, uh, I, I feel like, okay, now I, I remember something that I enjoyed as a kid. I feel like the magic school bus was inspired by this. <laughs> <laughs> the what? The magic school bus. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, an inner space yeah. with yeah. oh, inner space, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like it was inspired by this for some reason. Yeah. Sorry, you go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. No, you might be you might be right because I didn't think about that. But yeah, exactly. The magic school bus going through a person's body, and yeah, that's yeah. so awesome. 
because the teacher she she took the students on on these adventures similar to what these guys no. had to do like they had tasks to do like wait a minute and i think there <laughs> might have been wasn't there because that uh, I came to um, Magic School Bus a little bit later in my life to appreciate it. But I think that there was an episode where they were in the body and they got off course or something. Yes. And I could be remembering that wrong, but I thought that I that they had to go like a different route or something. So you might be right. They had similar situations. Uh -huh. just reminded me. But no, I, I thought about bringing it up. And yeah, sorry. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll you that's okay. yeah. yeah, that is good. Well, I thought too, you know, like I read about how they did this, that the the diving scenes, so to speak, were actually flying scenes. In fact, there was mm -hmm. a there was a flying technician or something credit at the beginning of the movie. Uh, so they're they're on cables and wires, and then I think they said they filmed it with a high speed camera and then slowed it down. Mm. So you look like you're in a fluid and then they had these, they had these face masks that covered up their mouth. So you could just, you could just dub the, mm. the talking in or the dialogue right in mm -hmm. on wherever you wanted it to. So it was really, but I never once looked at that and went, Oh, that's them being on wires no. being slowed yeah. down. You know, it's, I totally bought it. <laughs> oh yeah. I was in. Totally. <laughs> I mean, there was a there was a couple scenes where they were tumbling, where you could I could kind of see, oh yeah, mm -hmm. they're spinning around the wire gimbals, but I still, most of the time, I didn't get it at all. You like my? I'm practicing my uh, my noir lighting. Oh, that's good. It's working. Very, yeah. Very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, <laughs> that it. <laughs> I, I can tell that was a winner. Let's see. Um, Went over like gangbusters. Don't worry about it. That was gangbusters. Um, so this is just before they go in and right after they come out. Mm -hmm. Whew, I've had to fight since I've been in this suit. <laughs> You imagine if I did that inside there and he blew up, blew his head off. Everybody just... in the operating room, do not fart. Raise the zero. They're module. in the ear. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think I'm more tired than I was willing to admit at the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, this is after they're dumped off. I think I, I actually mm -hmm. I think I have a, a shot of that. Let's see here. I may have that on a yeah. Jeez, what's wrong? I love this. Oh, I, I just love this. I don't know why. <laughs> Where do you think they'll go? What, what, they might not. They might not be with the ship because the radar yes. is tracking the nuclear particle. And... What they would do would go directly to the eye duct. <laughs> and my favorite one. I couldn't find a shot of it when they're 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 all well, crawling over the eyeball. <laughs> my abacus says. Yes. <laughs> But I love shots like that when somebody's so they're in so, so many movies. Peter Cushing, uh <laughs> yeah. Oh. I can I just mention when they were <laughs> that like forever scene when they were shrinking down, like you said, that they went through the first scene where they kind of yeah. the first part and then they went to phase two or whatever. The guy directing the driver mm -hmm. with just this like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very precise, very. Uh... And then he's bent down looking at it. You know, yeah, I gets, know. Gets his head right like, in there. Close enough. Oh. I know. It's like we're talking millimeters. Yeah. You know, it's just I was like, oh, God. we haven't come up with this computers so yet good. that'll that can <laughs> pinpoint this, but we can send men inside the body in miniature uh, size. Oh, okay. I just oh, had, and I, I have that just... so much. I had to comment. It was, it, the whole. <laughs> The whole thing, they were so serious, you know, it was, I guess, first time they shrunk somebody to like, it wasn't quite subatomic level, but it was <laughs> cellular level. Oh, speaking of which, uh, some of the uh, AKAs on this were uh, 
course, I won't be able to find it now. Microscopia was one <laughs> of them. That was like kind of a working title, I guess. Oh. And Strange Journey was the other one. <laughs> Fantastic, Fantastic Voyage. Fantastic Voyage. <laughs> Strange Journey. <laughs> You probably just find those in a list of, of, uh, exactly. of uh, words. Well, it's like in, in Word document when you're typing an essay and you do like, you know, synonyms. Yes. Fantastic for you. Okay, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Throwing dots at uh, yellow stickies notes on them. Exactly. Um, uh, Foreign so bodies. Like, no. <laughs> A couple oh. other <laughs> also known as head for the anus. <laughs> of course. That we're uh. shooting the laser at the blood clot or the ship. I don't I don't know which one. And there's uh there's the world's Cora. first recorded uh, camel toe on film. <laughs> what? I didn't see any of that. I think it's moose knuckle. Whatever that is. It's, uh, <laughs> Doesn't look like it's uh, should be. On I TV. did not notice that, but thank you so much. For That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I learned a new term. I got to ask Doc for a, wow. a raise. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not going to forget this. She's running the controls, and, uh, <laughs> and his pants are too tight. Are... <laughs> are you sure I can do it? My pants are extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> It does look like it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm a surgeon. You guys. You guys. Oh. We're supposed to. I, I pulled these to talk about the cool <laughs> special effects. That was a special effect. Right. I guess I already did that one. So, all right. Supposed to be. So, I, I, you know, I got to make a couple of comments about the uh, director. And the writers. So, I Richard Fleischer. Pants. Richard Fleischer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody? Never heard of him. Sure, you have. Why Is he I... related related to the Fleischer uh, animation guy, Dave Fleischer? Fleischer? He did uh, a bunch of. of uh... It's Myers. interesting. He never was known as a great director. But he was a journeyman director that got to do a lot of uh, sort of like special effect or unique things. He directed Conan the Destroyer and Red Sonja. Really? Yep. But also Amityville 3D. Huh. The Jazz Singer. Um, Mandingo. Um, Soylent Green. No. Really? Yes. Huh. Um, I'm skipping a few here. Tora, Tora, Tora. The Boston Strangler. Uh, and then uh, I believe, if I scroll back far enough, didn't he do 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Cool. Wow. So, uh, very interesting mm -hmm. career and a bunch of... Uh, Film noir stuff, uh, Narrow Margin, which is a great movie uh, that was remade here. I don't know, like around 2000, I think. Uh, arm, arm, armored Car Robbery is another really good one. The Clay Pigeon. Uh, he did an Oscar-winning documentary called Design for Death in 1947. So... Richard Fleischer, I, I like he was career was made for this movie, you know, wow, special effects cool. and uh, a story centered around special effects. Mixed in there, he did. Uh, he also did Barabbas with Kirk Douglas, mm -hmm. Doctor Doolittle, Che, which yeah. is a really boring movie that should be really interesting. Stars Omar Sharif as Che Guevara. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Jack that. Palance plays uh, Castro. Hmm. Ten Rillington Place, a British uh, thing. The New Centurions, one of the, I think it might be the first uh, movie about it from a Joseph Wambau novel. Mm -hmm. um, 
Anyway, Are you a story guy. Uh yes, yeah. Police story. He did a whole series of these uh, cop novels, mm-hmm. uh, and I I should remember the titles of them, but I don't right off the top. Mister Majestic mm-hmm. was another one. Uh, Charles Bronson movie. So interesting, interesting director that mm-hmm. has uh, his share of uh, hits and and uh, bombs, I guess. Uh, and then well, the it's writer... interesting because this is such a inter- this is such a such a sci-fi cool movie, and it has I mean it, the result like we we're talking about just the imagery and the set design, and it's just really really good. And um, that he has all this different kind of experience, I, I find that really interesting that he would mm-hmm. put that all in. And this is how how it would end up, and maybe it's related to the cinematographer because I know you said that. That there was a lot of um, awards for that. Maybe it was a cinematographer, the set designer, and stuff. But the um, the outcome is just really good. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. we got We're going to have to do Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea at some point for sure. That was that was a yeah a big uh, terrifier of my childhood. The first time I saw that with the giant squid. Yikes! Um, and I know you guys did Soylent Green in the seventies, but I yep. mean, God, I love that movie. Yeah. It's just visually great. The story's fantastic. Um, I didn't know he directed that. I love that movie. It, it also turns out he's the son of Max yeah. Fleischer. Ah, so the Betty Superman, Boone. the old Superman cartoons, and Pop- exactly Man. Superman cartoons, mm-hmm. which is the thing I read about that. Chad, you tell me if this is true that he was the one that that first had him fly was in the cartoons, not in the comic books. Yeah, they actually um, they actually showed him jumping, but it would look like flying. Right, right. Um, so I, I think that's what inspired. Them well, that's to able, start able to leap a, tall buildings in a single yeah, round, right? Yeah, the, yeah. So I think it the way they made it look in the cartoons, it looked like he was flying. So, um, but I don't. I'm not sure if he was flying in comics by then or not. Um, not sure. Not sure. He, he did a, a, a the his company did a ton of those uh, Popeye cartoons too right, in the early right. that are my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ones with like uh, it's a one Sim- Popeye. Sinbad the Sailor. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Popeye mumbled a lot, and you really didn't hear what he was yeah, saying. Right, he had to pay close attention. And Betty Boop, I love Betty Boop because mm-hmm. there's a there's a couple of Betty Boop cartoons that have uh, Cap Calloway. Mm. musical backgrounds that are just awesome and anyway it's interesting i just find that interesting that that he the guy that did betty boo popeye and superman cartoons his son comes out and does mm-hmm. Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea fantastic voyage soylent mm-hmm. green conan the barbarian like mm-hmm. that's, that's crazy uh so then uh one of the writers I, I hope this is too boring, but Car- uh, so Carrie, Harry Kleiner did the screenplay, but the adaptation, David Duncan, he did a ton of stuff. He did the Leech Woman screenplay from 1960, the Time Machine, um, Monster on Campus, on the campus, the thing that couldn't die, the Black mm-hmm. Scorpion, the monster that challenged the world, wow. and the English version of Rodan. Um, I knew I recognized his name, but I couldn't pull any of those names out until I looked it up. Uh, and then the story, Jerome Bixby. Do you know who that is? It's familiar. He wrote uh, the one that most people would recognize. Well, there's two places probably. He wrote the "It's a Good Life" episode of Twilight Zone, the original Twilight Zone. Oh yeah. Then oh yeah, in the movie about the boy, the boy, the can boy make would, people disappear. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Oh, that's um, cool. And he wrote uh, four episodes of Star Trek. Nice. Uh, he also wrote It, the Terror from Beyond Space, and Curse of the Faceless Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did a movie before he died. He had an unproduced movie called The Last Man on Earth that his son produced after he died that came out I think it's like 2007 or something like that 
but it's like it's a story about a man who never dies and he's he's a college professor and he has his friends come and visit him at his cabin and it's it, it could easily be a play but mm. it's just this long conversation where he divulges his history to him and you start to find out that he was uh i can't remember if he was jesus christ or if he was john the baptist wow. and mm -hmm. and he learned all this stuff from buddha oh. and then went over to the middle east and that's when people thought he was christ and then it just all there's all these weird things through history where uh anyway that's interesting it, it, it's really interesting and then i yeah. as i was looking this up i just noticed they made a sequel to that hmm. like five years ago which i haven't seen so i need to i need to find that oh. out and i think it's called last man on earth the the holocene era or something like that oh. that's a really interesting idea i i that's really interesting well considering that it's like the entire thing takes place inside this cabin and I was never bored because <laughs> mm -hmm. the dialogue just, you know, it was like, anyway, I, Jerome Bixby is one of those guys that I just think is really cool. That doesn't, didn't get a lot of credit, didn't have uh -huh. a lot of output, but did some pretty interesting things. Check him out. It looks, yeah. The last man on earth. The Man from Earth, Hallocene. That's that one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm done with all of my little pet things. I'm sorry, I talked way too much on this one. No, it was awesome. This is such a great, this is such a great movie. It is. It, it's an excellent movie. And I think, I don't know if we got all of the... Uh, Little weird little stuff. Oh, uh, Bill Abbott, the guy who was the head of the department for 20th Century Fox, the special effects, they gave the credit to Crickshank. He had a book that came out before he died called Special Effect, Wire, Tape, and Rubber Band Style. Cool. That's cool. I don't know. Stuff like that is, seems cool to me. It seems mm -hmm. Um. I think we well, got everything. I else loved there. seeing I loved I think I've seen Inner Space a ton of times, especially when it first came out. I thought I enjoyed it mm -hmm. so much. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Because it reminded me of this. Mm -hmm. of this movie. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have well, that I think connection. It, they, I still I I described it as an unofficial comedy version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. But I love, and this is something that I really like about talking with you guys about movies and stuff and i and in general i just really like when you i feel like i my experience with them is so much richer when you kind of learn about the people that made it and you kind of go back to what inspired them and so you kind of go further mm. further to the source material and you're like oh wow that's so cool this was based on this movie and then you watch this movie and you're like oh this movie is so cool and then you get to learn about all these different artists and stuff so mm. i love stuff like that and um so that's I yeah, that's just great because you always usually there's something worth finding when you start digging and it mm -hmm. just you under and then you understand. I feel like you can appreciate more from the movie that you love because you can see the kind of love that was put into it, yeah. you know, by the people that made it. And I don't know, I just I just love that stuff. That's yeah. why I remember one time we were having a conversation about um, comic books and like the new Marvel movies and. And I was kind of surprised that it didn't make more people go back to the original comics because I, I would have wanted to be like, OK, well, who's what's the history with this guy? And like, because I find it fascinating that there's all these connections between all these characters. And just from listening, I'm not a comic person. You know, I just have a few that I really like. But mm -hmm. it's like when I started re uh, listening and, and hearing the stories that kind of intertwine these people and and really how much cooler these stories were. And kind of deeper, I was like, "Oh, I'm totally, you know, I really would want to get sucked into that and learn mm -hmm. about that." So I think because less shame. people read, less people read now. They're all yeah. they're, they're mm -hmm. listening to books and yeah and stuff like that, but nobody really seeks out. That yeah, I, I was yeah. just really surprised and and a little disappointed because it's like if you love the stuff, I, you know, it's just a shame that you went like then be like, die. There's this whole world to dive into with comics, mm -hmm. right? Where you can yeah. just get sucked in. So. Yeah. Well, I just even 
what I get into, not only that, but also how the movies, not, not just comic movies, but movies in general, mm -hmm. all the connections you find right. between the people that worked on this movie and they met this person and that's why they moved, worked on this movie mm -hmm. and that this guy worked on, you know, directed 20,000 Leagues exactly. Under Sea. Marcel Delgado was also worked on that. Mm -hmm. He did the miniatures for that. So like they're learning stuff mm -hmm. together and they bring them in, the, you know, so anyway. Right. Uh, and I think when I, we were doing, doing different stuff for Frankenstein, it was like, or, or um, maybe son, son of Frankenstein or something and watching that and then thinking about young Frankenstein and then reading some stuff from Mel Brooks about the making of young Frankenstein and just kind of seeing his love for this genre and how they, you know, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a mini film school, um, you know, cause you mm -hmm. find out all this stuff about everybody and there's, there's references and, and, connections to be made on a lot of, mm -hmm. of, of these movies and stuff. And it's, mm -hmm. and that's, that's fun to find out about and learn about too. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, I get, that's what I, I get some fun out of that. Mm -hmm. There's and a part jokes. Yeah. Fart that too. And the anus, anus jokes too. Anus Go for the anus. Um, I'm, still gonna, a, I'm gonna start a petition now that that's what this movie should have been named. A uh, go for the go for the <laughs> yeah, because it would well, have just been so much funnier. So we talked about plot holes, but I, I mean, a, a kind of an obvious plot hole is so since they speak. came out through the eye, right? Couldn't they have just put them in through the eye and never even had a ship? Okay, Isaac Asimov. They'd have had to Good swim point. the whole way. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys hear anything I said? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the last thing is there was an episode of I Dream of Genie called The Moving Finger, where uh, Major Nelson was hired by Hollywood to be a technical consultant on a movie. And the plot of the movie, as described, was this movie. Interesting. <laughs> I can see that though, because I was thinking about astronauts and stuff sometimes when I was watching this. Of yeah. course, totally just at the level of I Dream of Genie. You know, I don't wouldn't understand any natural, <laughs> actual astronaut stuff, but um, that's funny. All right. Well, we got to end. I'm sorry, guys. I, uh, Chad, I know is, he's getting that glassy look in his eyes. I'm sorry I interrupted you guys so much. I just, this, there's so many cool again. things about this. You have permission to interrupt um, me. And I do Andy, not have. I didn't pull the feedback, and we don't have time for it anyway. So that means I don't have to say anything. Next up, two weeks from now, will be a film released between 1920 and 1969, chosen by Daphne. What are we doing, Daphne? We are doing um, 1984, but the um, <clears throat> the BBC Live TV production. Uh, with Peter Cushing and Donald Pleasance, who I didn't know was in it. And he's... Hey, number one! <laughs> <laughs> you can't... Those are two people I just always look forward to, are Peter Cushing and Donald yes. Pleasance. And so yeah. it's just, you know you're going to get your money's worth. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about that. It's actually yeah. showing now on the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel. I think it's uh, some available and none of the versions are really no. good uh resolution but it's definitely worth watching most of that bbc stuff is not really good yeah from 1954 they weren't it's probably was only videotaped mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't wasn't the greatest so yeah. at any rate be sure to uh i i hope uh uh i'm brain dead I hope I feel better. Please stay in touch. We didn't read comments, but we will read comments uh, next time, hopefully. Um, so keep the comments coming. Be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Check us out on uh, the streaming channels that we mentioned earlier. And, uh, you know. Facebook. We love you guys. Facebook. There's a Facebook group. Uh, there's a website, gruesomemagazine.com. And uh, you can... Also send emails to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. We get those as well. So, uh, 
catch us again here in two weeks with another great horror movie of the classic era as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Some magazine.